It's worth nine marks in the essays. It's a massive goal of the IB psychology course. Most teachers lament that their students can't think critically enough. It's something I'm always wondering about how to get my students to do better. But what is critical thinking? In this video, I'm gonna to try to explain it using just one word. Now the full definition of critical thinking I like to give is it's a critical reflection on the value and the validity of one's own knowledge and understanding. Now, if I try to explain that to students, uh, I get kind of some confused facial expressions like this one, my favorite gift that I'm thrashing at the moment. Um, but I think there's an easy way to explain it, All right? Critical thinking in one word is but. Right? But, okay? Now, let's break that down. What do I mean? Okay, well, Let's take the three core approaches in IB psychology, right? We have the biological, cognitive, social, cultural. The key of a psychologist is to explain behavior and cognition. How and why do we think and act the way we do? And also we need our studies, our evidence to support our explanations of how and why we think and act the way we do. The biological approach is about explaining behavior and thinking through biology. The brain, genetics, hormones, neurotransmitters, how do those things explain our behavior and our cognition? The social cultural approach, is again, the same thing, trying to explain behavior and our thinking by looking at our social environment, the groups we belong to, uh, our, our environment, our parents, uh, what we observe, the world around us, our cultural upbringing, our cultural values. Okay, that is the, that's the way to explain behavior. Now the cognitive approach is simply, it's not the cognitive approach to understanding behavior, that's a terrible title for it, it's simply the cognitive approach to understanding cognition, right? Or the psychological approach to understanding cognition. Okay, we're trying to understand the thinking aspect. Right, our cognitive biases, our memory, um, the reliability of our cognition. Right, so how emotion can affect that cognition as well. The but element goes, well, yeah, if we look at the biological approach, sure, we can explain behavior by looking at genetics, hormones, neurotransmitters, but, right, but that's not the only factor, right? The social cultural approach can't be ignored. If I want to explain something like a psycho psychological disorder, like PTSD, yeah, I might look at abnormalities in the brain, okay, but that's not the only factor, then uh, I have to say, well, the, uh, can social or cultural factors also contribute to PTSD? But how did the abnormalities in the brain get there in the first place? Um, but I might also look at other biological factors. And then when I get to the studies, I might say, but those studies were done on, uh, on you know, American college participants, like a lot of studies are, but could we apply those to other cultures, other backgrounds, other environments? Same thing with social cultural approach, right? I might look at a behavior and say, well, yeah, we can explain that from a, uh, from a cultural upbringing, from cultural values or from social factors, but we can't ignore the biology. We also can't ignore the, the, the role of cognition, how we think. When I'm looking at cognition, the cognitive approach, I can say, well, yeah, we have to understand cognition, but well, what changes people's cognition? Is that our social cultural environment? And we can't separate uh, the mind from the brain, those two are inextricably linked. And then again, we have the studies and say, well, but what about those studies? Right? But maybe that, that study was uh, done in a lab. Could we apply those to a real life environment? So the idea of the but is we, we have an explanation of behavior. You have to, that's the first step. You have to learn how to explain behavior from the biological, cognitive, social, cultural approaches. Okay, and then you have to have the evidence, the studies. You have to explain the studies, right? Summarize, what did they find out? What were the methods? What were the results? How do those results support a particular explanation that you're giving? But the critical thinking aspect is then asking, but, but is that a valid explanation? But is that a valid study? Okay, and then there's a whole bunch of a uh, whole uh, series of questions you can ask. Ask you can ask after that. But this is how I like to introduce critical thinking to students. It's about the but. It's about arguing against uh, what you've already said. Here's my explanation, but, and that's why I call them counter arguments, right? The, this whole um, uh, the, the critical thinking is arguing against your central argument or your evidence. Okay, and it can begin with a simple word like but. I hope that was helpful. I hope that makes it clear. Um, I've liked this. I've, I think this is an easy way to explain to students uh, what critical thinking is. Now, this is um, uh, based on our three levels of learning, which is what the thematic model is based on. Uh, you might think I've just been misspelling thematic all this time, but actually uh, there's a whole method to the madness. There's a whole philosophy behind it, and it's based in the three levels of learning, knowledge and comprehension, understanding individual things, understanding application, connecting those, and then critical thinking, uh, critical and creative thinking, which is the, the but, then uh, asking questions about those different things and their relationships. Okay, I'm going to make more videos of those in the future, but just for IB psychology students, but.